in every time to connect what we read in scripture with what we see in life. It is a very, very necessary thing for us to see how what we read in the Bible has to say about how we are to live and for us to understand that the Bible is not just something for us to pick up when we want to go to worship or we want to have a nice something to make ourselves feel better. It is really Christians believe, followers of Jesus believe, that the Bible is the authoritative example lessons for our living, that in scripture we find authoritative lessons on how we are to live. Sometimes the lessons are warnings on how we are not to live. Sometimes the lessons are admonitions on how we are to live. Sometimes the lessons are examples of how others have lived that should show us how we are to or are not to live. But scripture is always, always to be read and understood as giving us lessons for living. Lessons. And so we come today to the gospel of the refugees. The passage you have read this morning from the gospel tells us that Jesus and his parents had to run to Egypt to escape King Herod. What does that have to do with us today? and how we live. Well, let me begin by reminding us that the Oxford American Dictionary defines a refugee as a person who has left his or her home and seeks refuge elsewhere. Refuge as from war 
or persecution or some natural disaster. And refuge is defined as shelter from pursuit of danger or trouble. The account of Joseph taking Mary and the child Jesus to Egypt to escape death at the hand of Herod the Great is one of the many lessons in the Bible about refugees, people who sought shelter from danger by moving elsewhere. In Genesis 28, Jacob's dream at Bethel about a ladder reaching up from earth to heaven occurred during his escape from the fury of his brother Esau after Jacob stole his brother's birthright blessing and defrauded their father. Jacob was a refugee. Later, Jacob and his entire clan found refuge in Egypt from famine at the invitation of his son Joseph. Israel and his clan were refugees. Moses was a refugee. You recall Moses was a refugee from Egyptian justice after he killed a cop. He killed an Egyptian who had been beating a Hebrew laborer. Moses had his burning bush experience while he was a refugee. We read about that at Exodus chapter 3. The Exodus 14 account about the Hebrew people crossing the Red Sea with Moses involved people fleeing Egyptian pursuers. Remember that definition of refugee? Moses was leading a procession of refugees. We can't read the Red Sea story without reading about refugees. You recall Elijah? that great confrontation with the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel, and then after that, prophet, after that confrontation, Elijah was given a death threat by Queen Jezebel, who said, I'll kill you because you killed them. Elijah ran to Sarepta and took up homestead, homestead with the widow and her son. Elijah was a refugee. At Acts chapter 8, I know this is a role, but I'm, 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 stay with me for a second. We read how the followers of Jesus scattered throughout Judea and Samaria following the stoning of Stephen. You recall after Stephen was stoned, the followers of Jesus scattered because of the great persecution. Philip ran to Samaria, and it was in Samaria along a, a road to Jerusalem where Philip encountered the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch story is about Philip being a refugee. In truth, the refugee experience lies at the heart and runs all the way through the Bible. It is at the heart of the Christian gospel. The psalmist wrote that happy are all who take refuge in God at Psalm 2 and 12. Proverbs 30 and 5 reads, every word of God proves true. God is a shield to those who take refuge in God. God is a refuge. Look on the front of your bulletin. I'm glad that Deborah did that on the front of your bulletin because she got the sermon title. Look on the front of the bulletin. Psalm 18 and 2. Let's read it together. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Hello, we are refugees. We have a refugee gospel. And in Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19, the prophet refers to God in these words, O Lord, my strength and my stronghold, my refuge in the day of trouble. Jesus was a refugee. Jacob, Moses, and the Hebrew people were refugees. Elijah and the first disciples of Jesus were refugees. The entire salvation theme of scripture is that the faithful seek refuge in God from evil. Because refugees are at the heart of scripture. Because the refugee experience is central to human history. 
The United States is not a nation only of immigrants. We are a nation of refugees. More than a million men, women, and children died in Ireland during the six-year potato famine that began in 1845, and another million were refugees to this country. Refugees. Black people left the South in large numbers to escape slavery on what was called the Underground Railroad. Runaway slaves were refugees. And later, they left the South in the last century to escape segregation. They were refugees. People become refugees to escape the storms of life, be they natural disasters like Hurricane Katrina and the Irish potato famine, political oppression such as slavery, or religious persecution such as was suffered by the first followers of Jesus during the first century B AD. And refugees are always vulnerable people because they're outsiders. They are folks who are, it's easy to pick on. They don't have a ready support system. They don't have protectors. Refugees are always at risk Politicians and pundits call them threats to national security, public health, and that they steal jobs. Folks in the local communities say they don't look like us, they don't talk like us, they don't eat and drink like us, they have funny kind of ways. Refugees are easy to pick on. But people who profess to be followers of Jesus should remember that we are followers of the refugee in chief. We are followers of the chief refugee. What would have happened to Jesus if Joseph had been refused entry into Egypt because he was not an Egyptian? What if there had been a wall what if there had been a wall around <coughs> Joseph and around <coughs> Egypt, such as the wall that people are talking about building around the southern border of this country? What if we tried to make this country a place where refugees are not welcome? Well, that's the reason why we're talking about gospel of the refugees. You see, you got to do more with your Bible than just pick it up and quote scripture. The Bible is a key to how we're supposed to live. Think about Jesus when you hear and see news reports about opposition to refugees from Central America. There's a rush to deport refugees nowadays. The front page of today's New York Times talks about the risk of sending refugees back into danger. A lot of the refugees we are getting from Central America now are like Jesus, they're children. They're children who are being sent to this country not because people want them to live here, but because they are afraid that they will die at home. just like Jesus' parents were afraid that he would die if he stayed at home. So what's the lesson for folks like you and me who follow Jesus? Well, one thing, one lesson is we need to stop talking to people about let's get rid of all the refugees. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 25, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. You took me in. Hmm. We are seeing people now say, don't take them in. Put them out. Don't take the children in. Send them back. What would have been said if we heard of Jesus, let's send him back to Herod? This is the testimony 
of our time that people who claim to be followers of Jesus do not see Jesus in the refugees of our time. My sisters and I, my brothers, the lesson for you and me is for us to read this and read this and understand that how we read this affects, should affect what we find in here. And if it isn't done, we aren't followers of Jesus. We are haters of Jesus. Amen.